Hi, this is Blake Angelos from Yamaha, here with my friends at Kraft Music to show you the Mo DX Music Synthesizer from Yamaha. The Modex Music Synthesizer comes from the same DNA as the Montage Music Synthesizer, our flagship instrument. In fact, the sounds of the Montage Music Synthesizer will load right into Modex. But the great thing about Modex is that it is extremely mobile, very lightweight. I'll take you through some of the sounds, the great control, and we'll talk about the mobility as we move forward in this video. Modex has two primary sound engines, the AWM2 sample-based engine and the FMX FM synthesis engine. The AWM2 engine is 128 voice stereo polyphony and has the exact same content as the Montage Music Synthesizer. The FMX engine has 88 algorithms, 8 operator, and it's 64 voice polyphony. Between the two of them is the dynamic control interface called motion control. The most recognizable component of the motion control system is the super knob. The super knob is a macro controller that controls multiple parameters simultaneously. As we go through this video, I'll show you how you can use the super knob in creative and really musical ways. The super knob is pretty cool. It can give you some visual feedback about what's going on and it can actually pulse in time with the tempo. I can do a few things. I can turn off the animation, I can turn off the knob flash, or I can take it all the way off. And I'm going to do that for the rest of this video. I'll take you through some of the controls on the front panel of the Modex. But the first thing I want to point out is the 7 inch touchscreen. This touchscreen is the same size, in fact it is the same touchscreen as the Montage. It makes navigating and finding things a breeze. So with Modex, we had our three points, sound, control, let's talk a little bit about mobility. This is the Modex 8, the 88 note graded hammer version. For the pianist, somebody that needs to have the, the weighted action because they grew up playing piano and they're used to playing piano, but they still want to have something that's very lightweight. This instrument here, the Modex 8, is only 30 pounds and literally I can pick it up with one finger, it's not a problem, it's very, very lightweight. Now the Modi X7, which I don't have here, is 76 notes, it is uh, synth action, it weighs 16 pounds, even lighter, super light. We like that for the keyboardist because the keyboardist wants to have you know, something a little bit bigger than 61 notes but isn't ready to go to 88 notes, they just need something, 76 notes, synth action for playing clavinets, electric piano and so on. And then finally, the Modi X6 is 61 notes. We think of that for the synthesis. The thing I like about the Modi X6, first of all, it's only 14 pounds, but as these, the size of this gets a little smaller, everything's very close and very easy to get to. So for someone that runs a Eurorack system or has some analog synthesizers, having close controls right in front of you to tweak things and to add cool FM sounds to your analog system, it's right there in that little Modi X6, 61 note synth action. The last point I want to make about mobility are the signature bags that we have for the Modi X series. We have a 6, 7, and 8 bag. The 8 bag actually has these really cool roller blade style wheels on it that make it really easy to roll it around and at 30 pounds, super easy. 
Um, but the ones I really dig are the six and the seven. I personally have a Modi X7, and I'm going to use that on a gig finally. We've announced it so I can play it on a gig. And I actually have a gig coming up where I have to walk a long ways to get to where we're going to set up. And to have something that weighs 16 pounds in a backpack-style gig bag with my pedals and my cables in the fairly ample a uh, pouch in there is awesome. So it's a great thing about craft music too is that in a bundle you can get that bag, the FC7 pedal, any of the sustained pedals, cables and whatever. Just check out the bundles. They have lots of them on there that you can choose from to get exactly what's right for you. <laughs> Let's go over the user interface. I'll show you what I like to call the four buttons that you need to know when you first approach Modi X. The first one is the performance home button. So just like montage, performance is the only mode in the instrument. It's where all the music happens. And there's a dedicated button that's called performance home right here. Now if you look in the screen, there's this thing that I like to call convenient redundancy. And what that is, is there are ways to get to the performance home in the screen or with the dedicated button. So if I happen to be in a place like utility and I want to get back home, I can either touch the dedicated button and go right back to performance, or if I'm in utility and I just touch the home icon, it does the same thing. Convenient redundancy. So that's performance home, and we'll dig into that a little bit deeper later on. The next button I'll show you is the live set. The live set is a collection of up to 16 performances. This live set bank is a preset bank, and there are pages under each of these. I can get to by just touching under the, on the page icon here, and I can go through different categories, spiralizer and synth, motion synth, and so on. This is preset. If I touch here, or if I touch the live set button, I can toggle through all the other live sets that are installed in here. In this case, this is the Bosendorfer library. This is Richard Devine performances. This is the Montage Expanded collection, and so on. And these are my user live sets. You can create your own live sets. You can edit them. If I decide I want to move maybe this sound and change, I can just touch swap. Boom. And it swaps things. I'll swap it back. So you have control over setting up your own live sets as well in the user live set area. Category search in Modi X is really slick. It allows me to search by text, by attribute, or by bank. So I'll go over to the bank and favorite. You can see if I just want to search, for example, only sounds in the Bosendorfer library, I can touch there. Or if I want to just look for anything that I've set as a favorite, or a user sound, or preset, and so on. The next box over is attribute. What attribute allows me to do is search different criteria. So let's say I just want to see only FMX performances. That's all I'm viewing now. So if I want to dial in and find what brass sounds are only generated by F FMX, I can do that by touching attribute FMX and touching brass. Now, next to the attribute is the magnifying glass. The magnifying glass allows me to search by name. So let's say I know that there's a sound called ambient but I can't remember anything else. I know that that word is in there. If I just type in A-M-B-I-E-N-T, anything with the word ambient will show up. And sure enough, there is my ambient sound that I was looking for. So that's performance, live set, category search. The fourth button is audition. 
What Audition does is it plays a demonstration sequence, but it not only just plays a sequence, it animates the keyboard and it shows you what's happening with a performance. A lot of times it's difficult to know exactly what's happening. The Audition clues you into that. So for example, let's say I want to grab a guitar sound and I'll grab an electric clean one. And there's one that I like to show this with that's called eight amps in a TC. If I touch the performance home button, I see this view where there's all the parts loaded up here, each one is muted, what does it do? If I play it, I realize it's a guitar sound. But what exactly is going on with eight amps in a TC? The audition will let you know. Now I stop the audition before it's over. It, obviously it's playing through each of the parts and each one is a different amplifier type. Why did I stop it? Well, because when I find something I like, as soon as I press the audition button, it stops exactly in that, in that position with the sound that I want and I can immediately start playing it. Now, if you know the montage, you realize that the Modi X has less controls on the front panel. There's all of these buttons are not on Modi X. This is a nice little area to put like a laptop or a tablet or whatever. Um, we also don't have as many faders. Uh, there's four faders and four knobs. You still have control and you can still get to all eight of the parts by touching the one through four, five through eight. But what you don't get is some of the cool highlights, the details like the the LEDs around the knobs and so on. The flagship, you get all that stuff. We also have some very unique Modi X control on here as well. And one of those unique controls is the part select mute solo button. Now, as I said before, all those buttons over here, you can do that with physical buttons on a montage, but on Modi X, since there's not those buttons here, we have this shortcut. What it happens is when I touch the part select mute solo, it brings up a dialog in the touchscreen itself where I can see things like mute, solo, and select. It functions like those buttons just in the touchscreen. So if I want to unmute things, I touch the mute and I just touch the parts I want to unmute. Or if I want to solo something, I touch solo and I can solo parts. And if I want to select a part for editing, say part two, I can hit the select and I can select it just like that and drop into edit mode. So that's the part select mute solo button. So let's move over to the left side of the keyboard. Over here you have essentially the same controls as you have on Montage, just in a different location. So you have pitch bend mod wheels, the assignable buttons that unlock different things of the performance. You have motion sequence on, motion sequence trigger, ARP, octave and transpose. To transpose the keyboard, you touch the shift button and it says right here, and you can see on the front panel that things that are shift functions appear in a black kind of a uh, line. So if I touch shift, I can transpose the keyboard without touching shift, it's octave shifts. On the Modi X, we have kind of a cool area right here. This is where the master volume knob is, so that just turns up and down the keyboard. But the thing I love about Modi X is the A to D input. 
A to D input has a gain control, and there's a stereo A to D, so you can plug in a guitar or another keyboard or a vocal mic directly into the A to D input and process it through the effects. It can also be used when you record to a DAW, because this is an audio interface as well. Speaking of audio interface, you have a dedicated USB volume knob. This is very cool. What this allows me to do is it allows me to control the playback from a DAW, so I'm literally controlling the volume input from USB. The other cool thing is that, let's say I want to use this on a gig. Since Modi X is an audio and MIDI interface, one cable connects to the computer, and I can monitor virtual instruments or tracks that I'm playing to with this handy physical knob right here, the USB volume knob. Very cool. Now, as I said before, there are eight knobs and eight faders on a montage. There's four here, so how do I get to all the different parts? You have selections right here for different parts, one through four, five through eight, one through four, five through eight part, or if I'm selecting an, an individual part and I want to edit at the level below that where the operators and the elements of a part are, I can select this to toggle those and I have operator or element one through four, or five through eight. So you can still get to everything, there's just toggle switches to get to them. Another thing is the backlit button right here. Touching this allows me to toggle through the different levels here. So at the top level, tone control, cutoff frequency resonant of the filter, pan, portamento, attack, decay, release, and reverb send, EQ, and arpeggio motion sequence control right here. So I can toggle between that, and then the very bottom one, is the assignables. The assignable, which are controlled by the super knob or can be controlled, are almost like mini super knobs. Each one of them can also have macro controls, and I can assign them to control various aspects of parts of a performance. Pretty cool. Now in the middle section here, you have a very similar setup as montage. You have your super knob, knob position. These are all identical. Pretty much same here too with the transport control. Control assign, like montage, allows me to assign things and I'll show that in a little bit. But a new button on Modi X is a very cool one that is just called rhythm pattern. Rhythm pattern allows me to instantly add a drum groove to a performance for various things that I want to do. So in this case, for example, I have the rhythm pattern. I have just the piano here. Let's say I just want to play along with a, a, a drum groove. I'm practicing, and I just want to shed over a drum groove. Rhythm pattern is great for that. So the first thing I want to do is I touch the rhythm pattern button, and it drops me in to a, basically a category search area that gives me different drum kits. If I select a drum kit, say Jazz Sticks, it immediately brings in the jazz kick along with any arpeggios or drum grooves that go with it. Let's say I want to play to a cool jazz drum groove that's about this fast. If I touch the shift button and touch tempo, it'll bring me to the tap tempo and I can tap that right in. So if I'm thinking one, two, three, four, one, three, four, cool, I got it. Now I'll go back one level and I'm right back to my rhythm pattern and as soon as I start playing, the rhythm pattern will start and play with me. So check it out. So that's one way to use the rhythm pattern button is just for practice, just to add drum groove to something to play along to. But there's another way you can use rhythm pattern as well. 
what this allows you to do is to do further production. So I'll start with an arpeggiated performance and I'll add a cool drum groove to it and I'll show you something else that is happening with that rhythm pattern button as well. So for the next example, I'm gonna go to the second page of my live set and grab this sound in the all FMX. Everything in here is FMX. This one, FM Chill Out, I love. This is just a great sounding, very inspirational FM sound. because it keeps moving. But I need to add a drum groove to it. So, touch rhythm pattern. There's my selection here. I'll touch trap kit. And let's hear what trap kit sounds like with this. So many of the preset performances in Modi X are fully baked, and people want to learn how to edit this instrument, how to assign things to the super knobs, and a lot of times they start with these fully baked performances that have already been assigned. And it's not very easy to understand what's going on when you have something that's already assigned. So I'll show you kind of how I approach um, getting your head around how this whole performance and parts um, to do some basic things like splits and layers and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to touch this uh, in my, uh, my, my user bank. I have the full concert grand piano from the Motif XF. Um, so it appears, that was a voice in the Motif XF, and it appears as a single part performance. And sure enough, this is full concert grand. So that's full concert grand. Now what I want to do is just add a simple pad sound, a layer sound. So how do I do that? I just select a part that's open. So right across here I have eight parts that are available. So I'll select a new part. Now, I want to add a different part here, but I want to make sure it's a single part instead of a big multi-part. Um, how do I do that? That's where that attribute in the category search becomes handy. I just search for single part performances. And then I'm going to go over here to the strings category maybe. And I'll go to maybe the synth strings category. And I'll select something like VP soft. This is a cool pad sound. So I have it selected. I press enter. And sure enough, I'll have a pad sound now. So that pad sound's pretty loud. What I want to do is I want to assign the pad sound to the super knob. How do I do that? Well, one thing I can do, I already have that second part selected. So it's important to know that when I press edit with a part selected, it drops me into part edit. Let me show you the difference between understanding what levels you're editing on. I'll go to the top level and I select that. It brings up a category search over here. But I'm just going to touch edit and you'll see at the top of the screen that I'm at the top of the performance because I selected the top of the performance. Now, in order to edit a part, which is what I want to do, which is that, that pad sound, I'm going to touch that part select button. That allows me to instantly select the part I want to edit, which in this case is 
part two. And you'll see up in that upper left-hand corner how that dialog changes from edit common audio to edit part two common. So now I'm at this level. What I want to do is I'm going to select the part setting over here. That dialog box drops away and it drops me in the part area. And here's the volume control for the pad part. I'm going to turn that all the way down because I don't want any of the pad sounds. So sure enough, I'll play it so you hear that it's just piano now. So I'm going to touch control assign. So it's important to understand that any parameter that you have in the screen that is controllable by any of the controllers, that could be the mod wheel, the super knob, and so on, the control assign button will illuminate and I touch it, and it's asking me to move one of these controllers to assign that parameter. I'm going to assign that to the volume control. And sure enough, now, so you can see that I've assigned the super knob to control the pad volume. Now in this performance, the foot controller is not assigned to the super knob. A lot of people don't understand that the super knob control with the foot control pedal is something that's assigned at individual part levels. Sometimes I may want to release that. Sometimes I want to assign that. Well, let's make sure that the super knob can be controlled by the FC7. How do I do that? I'm going to touch, again, the part select, and I'm going to touch common. So I'm looking at the entire performance here. I'll shut that area down here. I'm going to go over here to where it says control and control number. This is under edit common audio. It's the top of the performance. I'm going to touch control number. So under control number, it gives me the actual MIDI controller numbers that are assigned to various parameters. I'm going to touch foot control 2. Right now it's assigned to controller 4. If I move this all the way to the very top, it will say super knob. That is how you assign the super knob to foot controller two. Or I could put it to foot controller one, which is set to expression right now. Or I could put the super knob to maybe the mod wheel if I want to. But really what you wanted is that foot controller. And sure enough, if I move it now, the foot controller will now control the super knob. So now I have full concert grand with a pad sound assigned to the super knob with the foot controller controlling the super knob. So let's say I love the balance here between the pad and the piano, and I want to assign that to a button so I can instantly recall it. That's what a scene is all about. So to assign a scene, I touch the shift button and touch a scene. If I move this super knob a little bit more here, shift, scene. If I want it all the way to the top, shift, scene. And you'll notice that scene two, scene three, scene four instantly recalls those settings. So here's my favorite setting right here. So now what I want to do is I want to add a third part. And the third part I want to add is a pretty cool part, actually. I'm going to touch part three. Now I'm going to go to the bank favorite category. And if you look down here, you see all my banks that I have loaded into the library. You can load up to eight library areas into the Modi X, and I have about six of them in here. And the one I want to choose here is called DX7 ROM 1 and 2. So what is that? That is the ROM 1 and 2 cartridge of the original DX7. So how did I get the DX7 ROM 1 and 2 into Modi X? Well, at YamahaSynth.com, there is a place called FM Converter. And what FM Converter is, it's a cloud-based converter that takes these old legacy DX7, TX81Z, TX816 files. You literally take those bulk old 80s voice data files, drop them onto one icon, hit Convert, and it spits out a montage file, and Modi X reads montage files. So I can load in things like this DX7 sound. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll select Brass 3. So I'm going to press Enter. Now I have my part select mute solo. Well, in this case, I really want to solo this part. So I touch that, solo comes up. 
I'm now, and it is exactly how it comes in from the DX7. There's no reverb. There were no effects on the DX7. So I can add those things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some cool super knob things to this part here, and, uh, and we'll blend it in with the piano and the, and the pad that we created before. So since I have this part selected, when I press edit, it's going to drop me into part edit. So I know that. Edit, edit part three, common. Now what I want to do is I want to look at the part settings, which is over here. You can see the listing over here. And here are the algorithms. You know, just changing the algorithm or the arrangement of operators can greatly change how a, how a, a, a FM sound sounds. So let's say I want to select algorithm 30 here. Algorithm being the arrangement of operators. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select one of the operators here, operator 8. Now the DX7 only had sine waves, but MoDX gives you the ability to grab the different spectral components. So I'm going to select one like a resonant spectral component. You can hear what happens when I change that. It actually increases the resonance at this frequency. I can adjust the skirt, which is sort of the, 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 the Q point, how much frequency is being affected. So it gets a little brighter as I move that. So I'll put the skirt here and maybe the... So I want to assign this parameter resonance to the super knob. Since the control assign light is illuminated, that means touching that allows me to assign it that fast to the super knob. So now I have... Now I want the curve to be a little different here, so I'll select a different curve type. You have all these ones in here, and I can create my own user curve for how the motion of the super knob moves here. So I'll select one like, I don't know, tilt sign. Let's see what that one does. Oops. So I'll move this down here maybe a little bit. So that's pretty cool. So now I have a cool motion of that. The last thing I want to do is I just want to add reverb send to the super knob as well. So I'll touch part settings, general, and touch reverb send. There's no reverb on here, but touching control assign allows me to add that. And I can change the motion of this if I want to as well to something like, I don't know, how about a triangle motion? So in this case, it starts with a little bit of reverb, which you can hear in there. It'll get add more send, and then it'll pull the send down to basically zero, and then the very last part of the super knob motion, it'll go up in the end. There, it's dry right there. And then at the very end, the reverb comes up. I mean, this gives you an idea of, of the flexibility and the, and the control, and really just the amount of variation you can do to these things. You can combine things in so many different ways. It's why some of the sound designers, like Richard Devine, for example, says this thing is amazing that you can edit so many parameters. Very cool. So I'm going to add just one more parameter. How about we, uh, we say uh, part settings, and I want to maybe put, I don't know, variation send to the super knob. There's three different parameters assigned to the super knob. The variation send in this case is the chorus. Can you hear the chorus effect? So this FM sound from the DX7 now has all this cool motion happening. Motion control. That's what it's about. Now remember, I've got everything um, muted and soloed out here, so I'm going to touch my part select mute solo, and I'm going to turn off my solo section. And I'll just touch Performance Home. Remember, every time I touch Performance Home, boom, it gets me right back to where we started. So what have I created here? Let's find out.
That's pretty cool. Sound, control, mobility, that's the Modi X synthesizer. Once again, this is Blake Angels from Yamaha, here with my friends at Craft Music. Thanks for watching.